Are you considering a Connie Corso or a Rottweiler or just curious how these two breeds compare? Well, today you can find out exactly that in this video. Welcome back to the Fenrir Connie Corso Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviorist and I'm the founder and CEO of FenrirCanineLeaders.com. This channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything that you could possibly want to know about the Connie Corso, then how to become a high level canine leader that can raise perfect Connie Corso companions. So if you're a lifelong Connie Corso lover or just thinking about getting started on your journey with a new Connie Corso, then this channel is for you. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell so you never miss a future Connie Corso video. Now let's dive into today's video and we're going to get into these two breeds, the Connie Corso and the Rottweiler. Now for our first comparison let's discuss the different origins of these two different breeds. Now the Rottweiler is a very distinct breed with some ancient and pretty exciting origins. Rottweilers are the descendants of Roman drover dogs. Drover is the term used for dogs that herd cattle. These ancestors were brought to the north with Roman legions as they attempted to push the empire's border further north into Germania. Now centuries after the fall of the Roman Empire in the cattle town of Rottweil in Germany is where the Rottweiler that we know and love today really started to develop. Develop. These dogs were used to move cattle and protect precious livestock and owners from bandits and cattle rustlers. However, with the invention of the railroads and cattle cars in the 1800s, the Rottweiler suddenly became pretty much unemployed. But these brilliant and versatile dogs soon found their way into other professions in police work, personal protection and all-purpose dogs used to perform various tasks that require both brains and brawn. Now, the Connie Corso is an ancient breed. It is descended from the ancient Greek Molossi, which was a large, much heavier mastiff type dog, which the Roman Empire was at its apex. They occupied areas in Greece where these dogs were native. Now, the Molossi was quite the dog and the Romans were so taken with it, they took some of them back to Italy and bred them into native breeds there. Now, some of the first origins of the Connie Corso were used as Roman war dogs and they were used to fearlessly charge enemy front lines with flaming buckets of oil fastened to their backs. With the demise of the Roman Empire, the Connie Corso was repurposed into many different occupations, including hunting, droving and guard dogs. For centuries, this breed could be found all over the Italian countryside, though with the invention of mechanised farming, the Corso again found itself without a job and purpose. The breed slowly declined until the 20th century when the breed was almost lost for good. Thankfully, in the 1970s, the breed got another chance when it caught the attention of Italian dog fanciers who set out to restore and repopulate the breed. So next, let's look at the looks of these two breeds. And the Rottweiler standard hasn't changed much since it was first outlined in 1901. The breed is a robust, powerful dog with a muscular frame. They have a large, well-defined chest with thick, powerful hindquarters. Their coat is short and their colouring is often the breed's hallmark, which is that beautiful black and tan. While they are not within the breed standard, red and blue Rotties are starting to emerge. Now, the Connie Corso shares a very Mastiff type appearance with the other breeds from its Mastiff family. However, this breed is somewhat more tends to be on the slender and elegant side in comparison to some of the large lumbering Mastiff stereotypes like English Mastiffs or Neapolitan Mastiffs. Males tend to be up to about 28 inches tall with weight proportionate to their height, the females being slightly smaller. They have larger heads, sleek muscular bodies covered in short stiff fur. The Corso comes in many colours from light fawn to red with a distinctive black mask. Formintio, which is again from red to light fawn with a grey mask. You can also expect to see solid black, solid blue and variations of brindle. Other colours are present in the breed such as liver, chocolate, isabella, tawny and straw, but they are all considered out of standard. The Connie Corso will sometimes also surprise with a black and tan dog, which is a genetic throwback to the historic rustiff dogs of the Connie Corso's ancestry. So then, what about those temperament differences? Well, a well-bred Rottweiler will be loyal and loving towards family and a confident, courageous guardian, though they should never be overly aggressive without provocation. They can be somewhat reserved and aloof towards strangers. It is worth noting that some lines of Rottweilers out there have been bred to possess more aggressive tendencies, and there are some unstable temperaments within the breed. 
Now, the Connie Corso is intimidating, extremely intelligent, willful, and courageous. They are also fiercely loyal dogs who will do anything for their people, but can be highly suspicious of strangers. With the right direction, this breed is typically reserved and has a calm temperament. A well-bred Connie Corso is going to have a stable attitude and has earned an 88.1% pass rate on temperament testing from the American Temperament Test Society, which is higher than the Rottweiler, which scored 84 0.7%. Now next we're going to go over the intelligence and trainability differences of these two breeds. Now the Rottweiler isn't all brawn and consistently makes the list of the top 10 smartest dog breeds in the world, placing at number 9 on multiples of these lists. This is a brilliant breed, even if their stubbornness can sometimes get in the way. With excellent communication from consistent and clear canine leaders, this breed can quickly learn new commands and complex behaviours. Because of this breed's incredible intelligence, they also require large amounts of mental stimulation to really help them thrive. Now, the Connie Corso is a brilliant dog, and they can take advantage of an unsuspecting owner and end up owning their human. But because of their intelligence, this breed is very, very versatile. It should be noted that they can have a little bit of a stubborn streak, which will require an excellent canine leader to guide this breed in the right direction and earn its respect. Now, the Rottweiler is a very biddable breed. However, the breed can be a real challenge, as that doesn't mean that they're pushovers. They require an engaged and consistent leader that will let them know that they mean what they say but if they can find someone who can work with them instead of against them the rottweiler will prove to be highly trainable in a variety of different tasks and jobs but if they can find someone who can work with them instead of against them the rottweiler will prove to be a highly trainable in a variety of different tasks and with the right direction, a Connie Corso can be trained to do pretty much anything from personal protection to agility to tracking, obedience and even dock diving. Some Corsos are even still used as guard and herd livestock. But like the Rottweiler, they can be somewhat stubborn if the person training them does not have their respect. And because of their intelligence, sometimes they will think that they know a better way of doing things and that they don't have to look to guide their owners for guidance and direction. Hey guys, I just wanted to very quickly interrupt this video and let you know about our world famous industry leading dog collar the Fenrir Odin collar it truly is the world's best collar featuring the Austria Alpine Cobra buckle military grade webbing an awesome traffic handle for increased support that was designed by myself as a canine behaviorist to be the ultimate collar for these large powerful breeds that we all love so if you want more information on why I truly believe it's the best collar in the world and it might be the collar that you're looking for the link will be down in the description box below but until then let's get back to the video you were just watching so what are the energy levels like between these two breeds well rotties need enough exercise to keep them lean when they are young but not too much to stress out their joints as adults they need enough exercise to keep them in good shape but be wary of their black coats as high amounts of strenuous exercise can easily make this breed overheat when it is hot out now the Connie Corso is a more active breed in the Mastiff family. They will need a brisk long walk every day to really stay satisfied but they are also able to keep up if their owner is seeking a more active companion and will take hikes and more intensive activity in their stride. So then who is more healthy, the Rottweiler or the Connie Corso? Well, the Rottweiler has a life expectancy of around 9 to 10 years, and the Rottie also has a long list of health issues, including hip dysplasia, elbow dysplasia, eye conditions, heart problems, allergies, hyperthyroidism, and several different types of cancer are prevalent in this breed. New research done by Gerald P. Murphy Cancer Association with support of the Rottweiler Health Foundation has found that there are some links to cancer and longevity issues within the breed. These issues can be traced back to improper vaccination regimes and spaying or neutering dogs of this breed before six years. Now, the life expectancy of a Connie Corso is around 9 to 12 years, though there are some health issues to be aware of. The more common problems with this breed include bloat, which is where the stomach will twist over on itself inside the dog's abdomen. There is various eye problems, the most common being entropion, which is a condition where the upper and lower eyelid will roll inwards. Hip dysplasia and elbow dysplasia are also common, as well as some cardiac issues, which is what my Connie Corso puppy passed away from at just four months old. 
So what about the social needs of these two breeds? Well, the Rottweiler can be trouble for strangers or people that are unfamiliar with them. This makes socialization critical part of owning a Rottweiler. They are very social with their family and they forge an incredible bond with them. And many Rottweilers have even found it fitting to see themselves as pretty big lap dogs. Now, the Connie Corso is another social breed and they love to be with their families and will also form incredibly tight bonds with them. And like the Rottweiler, the Connie Corso breed will also be very suspicious of strangers and could be potentially hazardous dog without a really excellent foundation of incredible socialization from a very young age, which is something that we preach about so much in our Perfect Puppy program, which if you're interested in following to raise your perfect Connie Corso or Rottweiler, you can see links to that in the description box below. Now, are both or either of these breeds very child-friendly? Well, Rottweilers tend to like children, especially if they're raised with them. However, they can have strong herding instincts and should be supervised with very small children. They're probably best for homes with older children. It can also have problems when their child's friends are over as loud noises and rough housing can make them be inclined to protect their child, which is one of the most common reasons where you see these disaster issues arise with Rottweilers. Now, the Connie Corso can be incredible to have around children, though due to their size, they tend to do better in homes with older children though if this breed to succeed with children of any age they must have many excellent socialization opportunities from a young age and consistently throughout its life the corso tends to be a little more predictable overall and not overreact which contributes significantly to their ability to be agreeable around children at the least the downside is that they do have a high prey drive to be aware of and they may see a loud hyperactive child as something to be chased after so then what about these two breeds with small animals? Well, the Rottweiler can be animal friendly with proper training and socialization from a young age. However, some individuals still have problems with small animals and they may go after them due to that predatory intent because of those prey drive and herd instincts that are so strong within the breed. And this can go both ways with a Connie Corso. They tend to do very well if they're raised with small animals and taught to accept them at a young age. If they are good with small animals in the household, they still can be aggressive to strange animals that they don't know, which can be something to remain mindful about for the rest of that dog's life. So then last, but certainly not least, what are the differences between these two breeds with other dogs? Well, Rottweilers are typically same-sex intolerant unless it is addressed from a young age and with extreme finesse and care. This breed may also be aggressive towards strange dogs coming onto their territory. The Rotty requires good and structured guidance to succeed in either regard and be safe around all other dogs, which is why they're only recommended for high-level canine leaders with lots of experience. Now, like with small animals, the Corso can be fantastic with other dogs. If they can be raised with them, they excel with other animals. Socialization is critical for this breed. Good experiences with other well-behaved canines is extremely important and highly recommended. Though one would still be wise to use caution around strange animals just to be careful with such a large, powerful, guarding-type breed. Now, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, make sure you hit that like button and get involved down in the comment section below. And don't forget that if you are new here to make sure you subscribe. We have two dedicated Connie Corso videos coming here to this channel every single week. So I can't wait to speak to you again on the next episode of the Femria Connie Corso show.